when I walk into a space, a room, and it doesn't mean I'm better. It means I want to set a temperature here. And if, 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 it's, if, it's, if we're tight, we're going to be grateful. For, we're going to set the temperature of gratefulness, right? We're going to set the temperature. A bunch of other people are going to read it, and then they're going to respond accordingly. Mm-hmm. But I'm going, to set the temp- I'm going to set the temperature for my own life. Mm-hmm. I'm, going to, I'm going to set it when I go into a room. I'm going to set it when I go home. You know what? Yeah. Work long hours. You know, or I'm, yeah. maybe I should say I'm up long hours. Mm-hmm. But... I don't want my kids to have less of me than the person who scheduled the 9 a.m. meeting. Yeah. So I've got to set the temperature when I get home, like I'm all in with my kids. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying I do that right all the time. Yeah. Um, but I want to be all, I want to set that temperature. So like when, when I'm even thinking about when I'm talking to somebody, I want to set the temperature of what I want the room to feel like. Because mm-hmm. if I worry about how everyone else feels about it, I'm not going to make everybody happy, right? Everyone, it's too cold, it's too hot, mm-hmm. and I'm playing with... No, but let's just set the temperature. Good job. Yeah. You're pressing your vibe. Yo, what up, guys? It's Gary Vee, and it's time for the daily bread. Give us our daily bread. I want the whole basket. Cause I'm a hustle till I get it or I'm in a casket. Passionate for providing value in every way. Not cashing in for providing value every day. Paying it forward. Right thing, I'll do it till I'm dead. I hope you're hungry cause it's time for the daily bread. Cannot shake it. Yeah, it me just like uh, I try to go to a different. How's everything, Jonathan Parker? Nice to meet you, nice man. Nice to meet you, John. You do amazing, amazing work. Thank you so much. Amazing work. An amazing answer. <laughs> yeah, several things I can't do that he does on a daily basis. <laughs> so this is office here. Dude, it's awesome. And it feels nice and cool out here, and it's an oven in here. So oven in here mainly for videos. Just like that. No, it's just AC. Oh, oh wait. Here. Oh, that was the guy you had on. Sean yes, Whalen? Yes. Was he the second? Uh, from the podcast. From the podcast? Yeah. Yep. This yours? You can have one. That is one, yeah. Can I? Yeah, it's really good. It's like a 45 minute read. Big font size, liberal margins. He's, kind of I mean, he's like, I got 30 of these in, <clears throat> in me. And I was like, I get it. But his thing, his cool thing was like, he wants to get it in too many people's hands. And this book? So, Do you know if he used he create, like, create Space for this? Did he self publish? I want to say he used a publisher because I think it was kind of a part of a deal of putting out like a bunch of them. And um, that's just the first. But I mean, it was like number 11 on Amazon. I mean, everybody's going in there. Like I bought 50 or 25 and Joseph bought like 50. And so take your taxi. Okay. So what's going on? When's the Ted uh, TEDx talk? Friday, April 6th. So a week, a week from uh, tomorrow. Yeah, I think it's still available. Where's it going to be? Peace Center, Gunther Theater. Is it really? <clears throat> right downtown. So, uh, oh, it's April 6th. Dang. It's this next Friday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're going to be in LA. Dang it. Are you getting ready for your keynote out there? Yeah. <clears throat> but we're going to do some planning with the guy that's really throwing you in that. Nice. Um, yeah, I just had my last run through with my speech coach yeah. today. And how long do you have that? My speech coach. So, when you get accepted into TED, they give you a speech coach to really? go to TED. And I it's one of TJ's dreams, by the way. Is your speech coach? No, no. Like to be on to do it. At one point before I die, I will. Yes, the right. Stage, like, so, I mean, people live yeah. to like play in the World Series, to to start their own restaurant. I mean, all these really cool things. When I found Ted, I was like, <laughs> I want to do that. Yeah. And then their tagline is "Ideas worth sharing." Yeah. So they that's want awesome. they want an idea that's original with you. Mm-hmm. So. I wanted to do TED for as long as I could, and then you hear about these TEDx things, and then a friend of mine recommended me yeah. for Art of the Conversation, yeah. like that. So I was gonna ask you, what? so just like what you said, for having something that's uniquely yeah. your thing, right? so when did, when did you figure that out, like the, the Art of the Conversation? Like when did, when did you realize that like, okay, because I'm assuming at some point you just asked yourself the question like, okay, what's gonna be my thing? Right. No doubt. That's what I'm trying to figure out now. Like, what right. is my thing? So I, I was, I was very sick for most of my life. Huh. So I had seizures when I was a baby. Didn't know that. Um, I'll say the word wrong, but I think it's febrile seizures. So my fever would spike, right? Yeah. And send me into a seizure. So yeah. I, had, I had seizures when I was a baby. I didn't talk till I was between four and five years old. Wow. 
so so speaking like my mom i failed first grade because mm. apparently they want you to do things like you know reading yeah and talking and sure coloring inside the lines <laughs> Which now I'm wishing that they didn't force me to turn the sidelines. <laughs> so, you know, I was sick, and then I was sick in elementary school, I was sick in middle school, I was sick in high school, I was mm -hmm. sick in college. So I was always sick. Wow. And speaking, you're right. Oh, speaking comes so naturally to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, no. Uh, my mother spent, my mother, my sister, my aunt, they, and teachers, they had to work hours with me to speak, yeah. to say words correctly. So speaking was one of those things where even when you're sick, mm -hmm. you can still talk. Sure. And so when, when you're going through all this, you need to be able to communicate. So like, I just fell in love with speaking in front of people. Yeah. And the first time I ever got to speak in front of someone, I got to preach, right? Yeah. So I was like, oh, this is cool. Yeah. I get to preach and talk in front of people. And people responded. Mm -hmm. But you know, like anyone's life, right? Hills and valleys is, you know, pithy, yeah. and, but it's so true, yeah. right? Yeah. Sometimes pithy things are true and just mm -hmm. can't be written off. Yeah. And I got to a place just about three and a half years ago. I just wasn't in a good place. <laughs> I was purposeless. Yeah. I was confused. Mm -hmm. um, my wife, Jess, and I, we were good. But when the husband is like angry and whiny and complaining, yeah. <laughs> so we were good <laughs> in spite yeah, of where sure. I was at. So then I end up at this conference for an amazing organization here in town they invite me down to a conference and while i was at the conference i got to hang out with the keynote speaker guy, hmm. um, troy murphy and i had one hour with him and i decided that one hour i was going to whine and complain the entire time <laughs> which now i would be like i should have come with questions yeah. but he he cut me off and like you're at this moment and you don't, you never know when a transformational moment's gonna happen. Cause if you knew it was gonna happen, you'd probably avoid it or force it or make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. So you did, I didn't know it was coming and he doesn't, he didn't even know it was coming. Yeah. And so I'm sitting across from my wife's with me and his wife's here. And he was doing the, the uh, universal sign of, I want out of this conversation. He's holding uh -huh. his iPad and I'm whining and complaining. And he says, he just cuts me off and he just said, how many years are you going to waste waiting for permission to do what you already know you should be doing? Which is something, I mean, you talk about all the time. Yeah. And That's exactly what Gary Vee said to me. <laughs> it's, and, I'm, and, I, and Jessica says, can you say that one more time? And I said, yeah, one more time. He said, how many years are you going to waste waiting for permission to do what you already know you should be doing? Mm -hmm. And I didn't have a good answer for him. Yeah. And we got up from the table, and the next morning we're driving out of the, the hotel. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to wait for permission to do two things. First, I'm going to start Gospel on Tap, mm -hmm. right? Which is this nonprofit I started. Yeah. The second was, I'm going to go on a personal journey on why people like to hear me talk. Yeah. So this was pure diary. Hmm. This was for me, only intended to be seen by me. Sure. It didn't have a fancy name. So it was chicken scratch, like in notebooks, yeah. uh, notes on my iPhone. And I, I read all of these articles, watched TED Talks, read books, and, and every program, which was great. I mean, the books I read were fantastic. Yeah. But the majority of the books wanted me to be someone different. Okay. It was like a Lego set. Yeah. You need, you need to follow the instructions, one to 50, use every piece the way it was intended to use in order for this to happen. And I was like, no, I've, during this season of life, I was waiting for permission not to be me, but to be the person that everyone wanted me to be, to be the person that made everyone comfortable. That made, and that's why I was so sad. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to change me. I just want to be a better me. Yeah. So I said, well, I'm going to do my own thing then. And it's going to be super practical and easy for me to remember. It's going to be alliterated and it's probably going to rhyme a little bit mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's going to be easy. Yeah. So I put together this framework of a conversation for me and then in may 2016 people started commenting like oh hey you ask you're asking really good questions or you're really listening well yeah what's changed i said well you know i'm practicing these things and one of the other pastors on staff who oversees the intern program said hey you want to teach this to the interns to which i said no of course not <laughs> this is a, a diary entry like this is sure. this is me personal. this is personal I said, there's no stats to back this up. There's no deep <laughs> research, right? This yeah. is practical and 
narrative and story and personal. He's like, well, if it's terrible, they're just interns. So don't worry about it. I was like, well, if the bar's set that low, let's do that. And yeah. man, I did it for two hours. And my first, the two other guys, friends of mine from the community were in the room. And at the first, at the intermission in between the two hours, they said, we're going to hire you. Wow. And two months later, they brought me in. And really every, just about every month since then, I've had a different client ranging from big business hmm. to you know, one-on-one development. So when did I just decide this was going to be, yeah. right? It, it's like that transformational moment. It's, I, I never intended for it to be for other people. Mm-hmm. It was meant to be for me. And I called it the art of the conversation because I like the play on all the words. Yeah. So it turned into something when I gave myself permission to talk about it. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, I said no. And then, you know, I tell that story in a witty fashion. But there was a break. You know, and he went, all right, you don't have to. And I went back and I was like, I just turned on an opportunity to talk about this stuff. Why? Why? Well, I'm waiting for permission to see if it's good. I'm waiting for permission to see if it's going to be okay. So it just, it kind of took off from there. And now keynotes and talking and again, like doing TEDx, all that stuff is a ton of fun. But it happened not in a moment, but in the moments. Yeah. And and that wasn't the goal from the beginning. It wasn't Mm -hmm. like, hey, I'm going to come up with this topic that will give me the ability to stand on stage. And that's what I'm saying. And and it's almost, it seems like, it seems like because of what happened to you growing up, that you almost looked at conversation or just communication as like a science, mm-hmm. like an art. Like, like an art. that you had to like practice, and right. that you had to break down into, that it was more than just rambling. That it was actually, there was an art. <laughs> that right. That makes sense. And, call and it that. there's an art because most dialogue now is just idea lobbing. So here's my idea, I lob it to you. Here's your idea, you lob it to me. Dude, you know what you need to do? You, should, you need to create a um, podcaster course on how to have conversations, like on the art of conversation. For uh, podcasters. That, because you know how freaking difficult it is? Like me and that, oh, I see what you're saying. So that episode that I did with Ryan Mickler, we did it on the vlog Monday. 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 Um, he has the Order of Man. Order of Man, yeah. The top 100 business podcasts in the world. He's amazing. He's had 400, or 156 episodes. But he's had like Jocko Willing. He's had like just Tim Kennedy. Incredible people. Um, but we started talking. I'm like, it's not easy to to be on to to interview people in a podcast form <laughs> because I have a set of questions that are always on my phone. Right. And I'm like, all right, question one. To be able to like listen, right, but also know like where you need to lead that back to question number two, two or at right. least eight <laughs> questions that you can check off. I don't always go in order. Totally, like intentional listening is a workout. Yeah, you introverted or extroverted? Extroverted. So I'm extroverted. However, I took all those per, uh, personality profiles. Yeah. <clears throat> and two, two folks who did the personality profile on me said I was a learned extrovert. Okay that life situations demanded extrovertedness okay. because I really like being alone. Okay. Like reading books, um, <clears throat> watching documentaries. Yeah. I get up pretty early. Yes. Yeah. I know you do. So extroverted, but this is the other problem with even those. Okay. So you're extroverted. So now you're good at conversation. No, just cause you're good at making noise. Correct. Doesn't mean you're great at conversation. Or well, you're introverted, so you're bad at conversations. Oh, I guess so. Right? So you put those labels on people yeah. as if that affects your art. Sure. So your conversations are your art, right? The words you use. So if you are more introverted and use your art more slowly, or you're more intentional, or you process before you put words to canvas, mm-hmm. well, who doesn't want that in an artist? Yeah. And if you're extrovert and you're able to do it on the fly, cool. Yeah. Get it, but don't allow a personality trait to dictate or be an indicator of how well you can have a conversation. So yeah, I'm extroverted. Makes sense too, because I, I've been struggling <clears throat> big time figuring out what in the world, like where, where I fall. And I've always equated, and I keep, I continue to equate extrovertedness as being more confident. And I'm like, well, I'm confident, right? but I'm introverted. Right. But I, but it doesn't necessarily mean I would be someone with <clears throat> confidence because I'm introverted. Right. It's just like 
the environments that I would choose to put myself in would right. be more of introverted type environments, like going to a networking event and having small talk with a bunch of people. I'd rather crawl mm. under the table, right. get on my phone. But that doesn't make any sense for anything that I've done over the last 14 months on right. social media. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, and, and it goes back to that idea of like coloring inside the lines or yeah. putting together a Lego set. In essence, someone said, "Oh, you're introverted, so here's the set of Legos you get to play with." Yeah, <clears throat> you know this, that this is what Kendrick you Kendrick Lamar uh, song where he says, "A antisocial extrovert." Right. I, like, I think that may just be it. Like I'm just not a like a social type person, but I want to be around people. Right. I don't necessarily want to have to like. And and it's those <clears throat> those little pieces of confusion that throw off people when it's time to just ask a question. Mm -hmm. That's true. It's. And, and this is what comes about being authentic, right? Yeah. So, like, when I have tight strains with people, you know, I just own what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Like, hey, can you swing by today? Got to call the babysitter. Mm -hmm. Like, I could tell you, yeah, definitely. And then have to work all of this stuff out yeah, on yeah. the back. And then if it didn't work, like, hey, yeah. man, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I couldn't make it work. Well, it's just easier to own. Yeah, that's true. You know what's going on. So I think extrovert, introvert, asking questions, the key is, are you intentional about the words that come out of your mouth? Are you thoughtful? Are you creating memorable artwork? Mm -hmm. And if you're doing that and you're being true to yourself, however, whatever personality you think you have, yeah. people are gonna respond to that art. Yeah. They're, they're going to. They might not like it, but they're gonna respond to it. Sure. And they're gonna appreciate because it's who you are. And you know, in the TEDx talk, we're gonna hammer that. Yeah. We, uh, we, did, we did a live Q&A in here today so i had like facebook my facebook on facebook live i had the motivation kings facebook on facebook live we had instagram live we had people come with questions and then we would dm and get their phone number and, and we call them nice and dude i'm telling you how many did we do five five questions maybe four four or five four or five, five calls unbelievable mm -hmm. like i'm pretty <coughs> sure two of them were in tears and was one of the guy dean was from the uk Oh, that's awesome. Strong accent, which was like so cool to be able to like even fathom the fact that someone messaged and <coughs> called someone in the UK and he's been like following right, the Right, for sure. It's just a very, this is a very, that's a whole other story about how awkward that is to even process. But the conversation, it came, he had commented on something and it was kind of, there was a little hostility. It was kind of like, how about some, how about some, um, advice for those of us that are on a fixed income and mm -hmm. almost like live in the real world it was right like, yeah. how about it was almost like this like it was a little hostile so when i told kaylin i was like dm him and ask him for his phone number we'll call him he actually responded was like so you he was like what so you can um thrash me or use some some verb it's like thrash me in front of everyone right. and i was like no i was like i just want to answer your question it was one of the best it was like it was one of the best conversations like he was like at the end he was like i've never thought about it from that way he's like mm -hmm. you've really unlocked and opened up some areas that i've never even thought about the work Brene brown has done on empathy and vulnerability have you watched any of her stuff uh, okay. I've, I've listened to her power of vulnerability oh. uh like the audio it's like it was a presentation for like six hours Correct. i listened to it twice right yeah. so amazing and so her amazing. ted talk Brene brown's yeah. ted talk yeah i've seen i've seen them all I've it seen, is I've amazing her, her books are great and she talks about it it's the paradox right we think when we're vulnerable people will perceive us as weak mm -hmm. But when we're vulnerable, that's when people are like, wow, you're so strong. Yeah. yeah. You know, and now she's, she says it in a much more articulated fashion sure. and much better <laughs> than I ever did. So, but with this idea that she pulls out, I mean, just, I've watched that TED Talk a dozen times. Yeah. Is perfection doesn't make us human. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the flaws. Yeah. It's the imperfections that make us human. So what do we need to connect on with other people? the human side of us. Mm. So I can tell you all the things I did right, but what I did right, you've not done right. Because sure. I have my life and you have your life. Yeah. And we can try to compare successes. Mm -hmm. And that's, I don't know this gentleman, but that's what that gentleman was saying. Like, yeah. what about the real life people? Like, yeah. oh, you're comparing successes. Well, that's, that's difficult. Sure. Because <clears throat> I don't know what it's like to win a national championship basketball title. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan does. LeBron James, I don't. Yeah. But do I know how hard it is to work so hard for something and then fail at the end? Yes. Hmm. So the idea of vulnerability 
the idea of admitting weakness is the bridge to connection yeah. because that's what you can empathize with. Mm -hmm. And then everybody says, oh, you're so strong because you shared the weakness. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think, I mean, I, <clears throat> I like social media. I use it a little bit. I obviously use it to follow you <laughs> and I need to get better at it. But there is this element where social media isn't actually a whole person. It's the highlight reel. Mm -hmm. And that's why when you get on a social, when you do a breadwinner, you're like, hey, we're going to be real heel. Real, real, <laughs> real here. Yeah. And then you share a weakness piece. Like going three yeah. days, barely sleeping, drinking water. Mm -hmm. You're looking great, by the way. <laughs> like, that's just a real struggle. I, can, I know what it's like to be disciplined where I can't eat this and yeah. I have to do this. Mm -hmm. That... It's, the, it's in the imperfection, it's yeah. in the struggles that human connection happens. And then we can celebrate successes. Because yeah. when I know I connect with you, I'm like, oh man, then I am happy. It's not you. like there's some weakness that I have that you may not have a strength that like, in this area of my life, you crush me in. Like you've got this nail that I struggle with it. Well, that doesn't take away from the thing that I'm really good at. Right, like, you know, like, no, not at all. It doesn't take away from your expertise and whatever right. your expertise is. And I mean, yeah. early on, how many Facebook messages were I sending you early, like yeah. a year ago now? Yeah. Like, hey, what about this? Tyler, you're doing this. Yeah. You're talking value. Mm -hmm. How do I make, like. And yeah. you're almost like devil's advocate for a while. Right, like how do I, <laughs> how do, I do this? Yeah. yeah. And because you were strong in it. Mm. And I was okay. I mean, or I was just doing it. You were just doing it. <laughs> and giving the appearance really of being strong. strong. But like just doing it. <laughs> well, and, and doing it is just part of being yeah. strong at yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Just getting out there and doing it. Mm -hmm. um, people asked me, like I was getting ready to give my first keynote. And they said, so have you done any other keynotes? I said, no. <laughs> and they're like, oh. I said, listen, that's going to be great for you. Because if I only get one shot at it, <laughs> I'm going all in. And like oh, yeah. I will be as ready for it as can be. Yeah. And <clears throat> they laughed. But. <laughs> it's this idea of own own the flaws mm -hmm. own the weaknesses because somebody's stronger in it and what a gift for that person to be like man I would love to help you with that yeah. and where you're strong be humble but also be like I'm good at conversation I'm good at helping people have conversations why am I so strong about saying that because if you're not I'd love to help you and that's why I like the word project, like the MSCO project. Right. And this idea of that, like, it's just we're all just trying to get better. Yeah. We're just trying to, to level up. Um, it's, it's interesting. But that Brian Mickler also talked about the fact that, like, now that it's become this trend of vulnerability, right. that, like, just because someone says be vulnerable, like, some people don't need to be vulnerable. Like, there's, there's way it, – it's authentic. Like, authenticity is – authenticity like right. i love when people like want to like no like literally i've had people dm me like how do i be more authentic in my social media i'm like my brain just exploded from the <laughs> complexity and lack of complexity of, that, the, same of the same question right. but like it's just when you try to force anything right people will be able to tell right. and so there's some people that are out there that i mean that are and, and i'm trying to i'm always like trying to examine like each step that i take whether it's a step that I'm taking because I think it's a step that's supposed to be taken, like with right. vulnerability. Yeah. Like, we're about to get a lot more vulnerable in a lot of these episodes. I'm about to open up a lot more of the struggles that I've had in the past. Mm -hmm. But I don't ever, I'm just so cognizant, like I don't ever want it to come out as a strategic move right? because I felt now is a good time to be doing these type of things. Like, yeah. I want to make sure that it is authentic but that it is like portrayed in a way that it is me wanting to put this out there because i know someone else is either dealing with the same thing or dealing with something that they can resonate with the mindset right. of dealing with it and not look at it as you know lewis howells wrote mask of masculinity and he's right. you know removing this mask and that's just what he's supposed to do and so right. now that's why he's doing this and it's just to make himself look better not right. to actually expose the issues um you're always going to have obviously people that are going to say yeah. one side or the other, but it's like, I'm so just like, not just, not like caught in that, but it's like, I'm always thinking about it. Like, how does it, like the optics of it? Right. Because the intent is right. Right. And it would be less frustrating if the intent was wrong. Correct. Like if I had the if I had the wrong intent and I'm really just trying to put this stuff out there to make myself look better and to sell this or to do this, right. 
then it wouldn't be so difficult. But like when the intent's right, I'm like, I don't want to have this right intent and it not be done right, right to where people perceive it as though I didn't. Like that's frustrating. Right. <laughs> like when you're like, no, like you don't understand. Like I don't, this is, God, it's not about me. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Like when it really isn't. Right. If it was, then it would be like a whole lot easier to take that feedback and be like, oh, someone caught me. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, like, oh. Lock them. Yeah, exactly. Edge. And that's why, like, I don't. I don't delete any comments. Like, all of them, like, I just respond. Sometimes I just don't respond. I let it just stay up there. I'm like, someone's opinion. I'll just leave it up there. Um, and but trying to just calculate and make those right moves. It's you tough. You open to a perspective on that? Yeah, for sure. So one of the things I talk about is when an artist creates a piece of art, whether it be um, a painting or sculpture or poetry or music or, like, culinary, right? Mm -hmm the key to art that you really know is true is when the artist did it for themselves first, not for understanding the responder. Okay. Like when I talk, the most comfort I have, it's Mark Twain's line. If you always tell the truth, you never have to worry about what you said. Yep. Like if I'm, if I'm true to me in my art, you might not like it, but at least you don't like it. At least you don't like it. And it was actually me. Yeah. Right. It's not, I don't go back and go, man, I knew I should have said that other thing because you would have liked it then. Yeah. That's not me. So how I've thought about it is the only thing you can control with your conversations, your art, the, the value you put out all the time true. is truth. Like I'm doing this for me. I'm creating this art for me and I'm letting you watch it. Hmm. So you might, you might think that I've strategically planned this for you. No, I strategically planned this for me. This was my next step, yeah. and I just happen to have a camera on me. That's a good one. That's perfect to work with you. It's for me, and I want to share it with you. So yes, it was strategic. It was strategic for me because it's the next step for me. Mm -hmm. And I hope that it encourages you to take your next step. Yeah. So yeah. <clears throat> that's a way yeah, to think about it. That's perfect because I mean, that is what it is. These, like this video, like this vlog and all, like it's... 30 years from now to be able to have this, like, that's why I'm doing it. Right. You know, for my daughter to be able to watch it and for all that, and for me to be able to watch it, I'm going to be some old man one day that watches himself on TV and it's going to be really <laughs> weird. But, you know, to be able to, like, see all this stuff play out in real time, it's just, like, it's very, very strange. Right. For sure. Uh, but I think you're exactly right. And that's just, that needs to be the way I look at it. Uh, the other day, the other day, I released. I put on my uh, Instagram or something very similar to that idea. Yeah. And I said, I stated as my main thesis that the best person to sell to or market to on social media is to yourself. Mm -hmm. Simply look at every single struggle you've ever experienced. Right. And well, it, during that struggle, if there was a moment where it's like there was no one. I could have looked to to really address that, then you know, then that's a hole technically in the market because right. it's like you were there, you experienced the fact that like there was no one with that exact version of the message. Right. So it's like you can put it out there, maybe not for like because people like I hear it all the time, like oh yeah, put it out for you, but it can be extended further. It's like put it out for that you like five years ago that really really right. needed it mm -hmm. right at that moment. Because there will be another person who will, who will fill that hole in. Exactly. Like, I put out content, like, like for literally the version of me that was in college. Like, I literally want, like, that kid in college, I want him to be, uh, stumble across the daily, the daily Bread or my Instagram and been like, oh, my freak, this guy finally gets right. it. Like, um, so, yeah, I just, and that's, and that's the ultimate, I mean, to be able to help people avoid pain that you right. experienced by experiencing it through you so right. that they don't have to actually go through it. Yep. Um, that's a lot of it. it there's a, another, I love quotes because I like to borrow brain. Um, <laughs> there's a quote that says, when you get to a hill, don't think that waiting is going to make it any smaller. <laughs> so some of the things that, you know, when I talk in the art of the conversation or when I'm asked to speak, one of the things I'm trying to do is I remember being, not that I'm old now, but I remember being younger and looking at what I perceived to be a mountain. And I needed someone who said, hey, I've already gone over that hill. It's a hill. Yeah. Don't wait. Like, mm -hmm. come on. Yeah. So sometimes when you talk, when you share content, you know, TJ, to your point, it's you're doing it to show some people that what you think's a mountain is a hill. 
I got over it. Mm-hmm. You can get over it. And, and there will be mountains. Yeah. But what you're facing is a hill, but you needed to know someone got over it. Mm-hmm. So let's not wait thinking it's going to get smaller. Let's just, go to, let's just go to work. Let's just go to work. I think the big encouragement too is that for them to know that what they're going through in that, that that's what's going to turn them into the person that's able to receive the blessing on the other side of it. Like all these struggles, all these that we all go through, and that's something I learned from Elevation from Pastor Stephen a while back. He talked about just like these storms that we're in, like that's given to you so that you can become the person that's able to receive like you can't receive this this blessing over here until you go through this because going through this is going to turn you into the person that can receive it if not for this struggle that doesn't happen so there's purpose in it and being able to somehow get people to understand that when they're in it because i can understand that i'm empathetic of the fact that like when you're in it you hear that and you're like, well, screw you. Like, right. I meant, like, you don't understand. Like, this is tough. This is, this sucks. This is painful. But to somehow get that person to understand that, like, I understand, like, yeah, it's painful. Right. But do you see the bigger picture of knowing that, like, there is purpose in the pain? Right. Like, that, that for me, like, if someone would have told me that, that's what I needed to hear at that time, um, going through those situations. Which now, in hindsight, like it's as clear as day. Right. It's clear as day that I'm who I am now because of those things, and I'm grateful for them. Space to even, you know, think is possible. Right. But to understand it, that like, man, as bad as it is, that means as good as it's going to be, because it's almost direct proportion. Like, the correlation between like these stories of these incredibly successful people that have the most insane, terrible, painful, horrible stories. It's almost direct correlation. Like, the crazier, like that guy. Mom's a prostitute on the streets, on drugs. He's on the streets. It's almost like a direct correlation of where he'll go in life if you're able to make that, if you're <laughs> that, able to make switch. that switch. Right. Um, which it's almost crazy. Like, we, we talk all the time. Like, we just want to give people, we want, like, a, a college course where you can just have the world end in like right. 90 days 90 your days. world just be crushed and then to come out of that and have all this ex- yeah. experience just the, in a condensed period of time the simulation of the world, I <laughs> yeah i remember uh watching a, a video on linkedin gary v and somebody asked him why do you get up every morning or what drives you to get up every morning young kid back road nosebleed seats yeah and gary just said gratefulness yeah just grateful and there's this idea that leaders and again that's a vague term right mm-hmm. if someone's following you even if it's one person you're a leader mm-hmm. so you have a responsibility now most people go through life as uh, thermometers they're reading temperatures of the room all the time mm-hmm. but leaders and doers and authentic leaders or authentic people they're thermostats they set the temperature in the room mm-hmm. that's interesting so What's when I walk into a space, a room, and it doesn't mean I'm better. It means I want to set a temperature here, and if 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 it's if it's if we're tight, we're gonna be grateful for. It. We're gonna set the temperature of gratefulness, right? We're gonna set the temperature. A bunch of other people are gonna read it, and then they're gonna respond accordingly. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna set the temperature. I'm gonna set the temperature for my own life. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna set it when I go into a room. I'm gonna set it when I go home. You know what? Yeah. work long hours you know or I'm, yeah. maybe i should say i'm up long hours <laughs> but i don't want my kids to have less of me than the person who scheduled the 9 a.m meeting yeah so i've got to set the temperature when i get home like i'm all in with my kids mm-hmm. and i'm not saying i do that right all the time yeah um but i want to be all i want to set that temperature so like when when i'm even thinking about when i'm talking to somebody i want to set the temperature of what i want the room to feel like because if I worry about how everyone else feels about it, I'm not going to make everybody happy, right? Everyone, it's too cold. It's too hot. And I'm playing with... No. Let's just set the temperature. And let's go about. So... That pastor. That's right. And it just kind of <laughs> oozes out every <laughs> once in a while. But that, I think, goes to the idea of when you set the temperature, you are okay with talking about the college you. Mm-hmm. You're talking like the kid, the person going through the struggle. Yeah. Because you're not trying to tell them what they're going... You're not reading the temperature for them. Yeah. Yeah, stinks. But let's set it right here. What what do you got to learn? 
It's hard to think about that. I know. But we got to do the work. We got to think about it. And that's why that verse, it's valleys versus storms. Uh, the valley of the shadow of death. I'll fear no evil. I heard one of my good friends, Pastor in town, Sean Dogan, preached this passage. And he said, do you know why you can fear no evil? Because death was just the shadow, which meant there was light. Hmm. And I was like, that <laughs> right there, right there, yeah. that I, want, they thought, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. So that, right, that's good King James right there. You are with me. So that means the light is the person who's with you. So that, so like the reason you don't have to fear is because death was just a shadow. Storms are just storms. And, and man, I heard that, what, December, January, when he did that 20, Psalm 23 series. Man, yeah. the reason you fear is death was just a shadow. And some of these things we think are overtaking us are just shadows. Hmm. Just shadows. I, I like that. I, I really dig that. This podcast is called The Death Proof Life. So. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's The Death Proof Life. I mean, yeah, so, like, I vibe with that. Um, first off, on the on the aspect of just, like, like that, that whole idea of shadows, that's just so incredible. Um, but also, like, it goes really well with, so you call it, like, the art of conversation? Art of the conversation, yeah. Right? Um, just the other day, like, I was talking, I was talking... I have this friend who looks like a vampire named Mike. Okay. <laughs> but that was mad. But we were talking for two hours literally about the nature of conversation. Nice. And I'd, I'd stated that a really good conversation with the vlog, because he just watched the vlog. Mm -hmm. And I was like, the really best vlog episode is when the conversation builds something so that both parties in the conversation right. had some third piece of knowledge that yes. did not, like, neither one had previously right. gone in knowing. Exactly. Um, and it's like, and so I really like that aspect that you talked about, about like setting the temperature. Mm -hmm. I'd said, last night I was talking about like, well, you want to set the intention to every single time right. you're talking to the other person, you know that no matter what, it's like, not just like they're going to leave a better person, you're leaving a better person, Correct. but like you built something new. Right. And like, if you did that, there's no way you're going to have the uh, conversational arrogance that might have, mm -hmm. that people might have of like, Oh, like, I already know what answers you're going to give me. There's no new right. pieces of information. But it's like, even if it's, there's 50 things that they say, but and 49 of them are like, you've kind of heard it before, but that one, one piece what one piece might be that thing to build something brand new that might be a whole new structure. Exactly. So, and yeah. that, I define a conversation as the mutual sharing of ideas, stories, and experiences around a specific topic to build common ground. And what you just talked about was so key. It's mutual sharing. So we hold space together. We're, we're mutually in it, right? We're mutually here. We're not, we're not standing on our podiums yelling across, yeah. you know, trying to throw ropes at one another. To hold, we're, we're mutually sharing. So when you mutually share something, you mutually build something. Hmm. And, the, and, and the reason conversations fall flat most of the time is I'm going to stand over here, you're going to stand over here, and soapbox, and, and, and we'll talk. We'll talk this way. And that's not mute. We're not, we're going to talk at you. Yeah. We're not going to talk connected or sharing space. And then what's the point? Share space to build common ground, which means you should have more common ground. You should have more relational room with somebody at the end of the conversation. So if you, if you have a question of like, people ask me, how do I know if the conversation was good? I say two things. One, did you share something together in which you arrived at something that you only could arrive to together? Okay. So you've shared something and you, you arrive at something that you only could arrive together. And do you have more common ground with the person at the end of it than you did before? That's how you know if you just had a healthy conversation. You know, it almost makes you think like every vlog episode, it's like a vlog episode does not incorporate a conversation with another human being. It's almost like you're missing a huge element of life. Mm -hmm. Because that happening on camera and being viewed by someone else almost creates the same exactly like they can see it happening and see it building and see it growing and it's almost as though they're experiencing it exactly. themselves they're mutually in essence yeah. sharing it with you that's interesting and, and that stems from a, a place that i believe that all people have two desires that they're looking to fulfill every day mm -hmm. and that's the opportunity to communicate and the respect to be heard yeah that everyone's and that's why when you ask that gentleman hey can you tell me about your mom, I just saw this story. If you're comfortable with it, yeah. 
well, what did you just give that person? That person wanted the opportunity to communicate this story, mm -hmm. and then you gave him the respect to listen to him. Yeah. That guy who called from England or the UK, mm -hmm. oh, you're not going to actually respect me enough to listen to me. No, man, we're not only going to give you the opportunity to communicate, yeah. we're going to give you the respect to be heard. And when you fulfill that desire in somebody, when you fulfill those desires that they wake up every day wanting, whether you do it on the vlog or on the podcast or you do it face-to-face, -face, when you give some, people are longing for that. And when that happens, you can, as you said, you saw his eyes like, mm. oh man, I've been waiting for this invitation. And I think um, I definitely want to talk more about this concept of um, what I talked about with Brian Mickler, what I've been talking about with Sean Whalen. This idea of men don't have people to have these conversations right. with, like real conversations. Right. And I'm becoming more and more aware of how just huge of an issue it is yeah huge like epidemic level right. <laughs> um the lack of accountability mm -hmm. or just something that someone can be honest with right like i mean sean that's all sean and ryan like these guys do so you've got these people that are walking around saying like yeah everything's good everything's great i'm this big strong man but right. deep inside they're dying like yep. just in a bad place but they had to put on this front exactly. because they're a man right. And I know that's probably a lot of what you're doing with your organization yeah. and, and with, the events that you've got going on. Gospel on Tap was started for men in that exact position. You know, for men to be able to come around where we leave judgment and dogma at the door. Mm -hmm. And in essence, nothing, nothing's off limits. We're going to yeah. talk about real life in a real way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Gospel on Tap, we've seen men have to just be able to deal with this stuff. Yeah. And there needs to be more room for these conversations because we're leaders. We're asked to lead, and, and women are asked to lead too. Yeah. We're just in this concept of men. Sure. We're leaders, so that means we need to be the leaders in how to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Because if, we, if I can't figure out how to do it, I can't do it for my three little boys, can't do it for your, your little girl. And we need to lead on how to have a conversation yeah. so that somebody else can go, wow, if they can do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. If they can be intentional and thoughtful with their words, I can be. Yeah. And if, I can, if he's willing to listen, I'm willing to listen. And that has to be displayed because men not only need it, but they need to lead in it. Hmm. It's almost being able to speak in a way that gives other people permission to tell you the things that they need to tell, like, right. th that they need to give people the permission to open up. Right, 100%. Because that's, that's the issue is no one's giving them that window. And if it's just the tiniest crack in the window, they're going to... Yeah, I mean, and that's it. I mean, everyone's just assuming yeah. and everyone's probably not wanting their own issues to right. get out and so they're staying closed off which yep. makes you stay closed exactly. off and we're all just living this fake robotic right. kind of all world. desperately wishing we could have a conversation <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah yeah yeah